from wherever you are. Welcome to Let's Play Games. I'm John McFarland, Adult Services Librarian for National Public Libraries, and I hope you'll join me in learning or rediscovering some of the more common and uncommon games out there. We're going to go back this week to Scrabble. Last week, we learned about the basics of how to play, the initial strategies you can use, and how to challenge a word and how to determine whether it's worth challenging at all. This week, we're going to discover some more advanced ways to play. Let's get stuck in. So last time, we went through a game from beginning to end. This time, I want to show you a different game with a little bit more complexity. And I went ahead and did the words, so I'm just going to show it to you, and we're going to go through this step by step. So remember how we had beginning here in the middle. So we're going to start off with N O X. I'm going to try and describe the words as best as I can. So uh, that is the name of a Roman deity. So Nox here is going to be worth 20 points because we've got in the center, there's that double word. So one, two, and the X is worth 10. So 20. We're already kind of well on our way. So next, what we are going to have is on top of this, like I described, because as long as it's valid, for each segment that you create, this is a jor, which is a musical instrument segment in Hindi. Now, this is going to be worth 30 points. And that's partially because we keep getting to develop off of this is worth eight points on its own for the J. This X is worth eight. So since we're combining things together, that helps us along with our process. So that's eight, nine, and then another nine, so 18, 19 because of the double letter score that's here, and 20. So right now we're pretty even, uh, sorry, 30, that's my apologies. Now we're gonna move on. Let's see, where are we going next? We're gonna go down here. And this is Yug, which is a description of an era in Hindi. So it's a piece of time scale. So that makes ox into oxy and yug with its double letter score. Hey, now we're really starting to cook. And that is worth 28 points on its own because we're combining this eight point, adding a four point, one. This four gets doubled, one, two. So that's going to be 28 points in total. Now we're really starting to kick off. Now, let's see, where are we going next? We'll go over here. We're going to go down this G for Gori. And Gori is uh, a description for a uh, fair skinned woman in Hindi. So I'm leaning a little heavily on other languages here. So that way I can maximize the letters that are a little bit more complicated to use than in English, you would need different styles of letters to get to. Now that is only going to be worth 10 points on its own, even with the double word score, but we're still kind of well on our way. Now, where do we go next? Let's so we're going to go over here. We're going to go for quail. And we're going to get this U off the board and we're going to get it right where we want to in a way that maximizes our potential score. So we've got 10 points twice. And we're going to have this double word score here. So we're really going to get some points off of this one. Uh, so 20, 2, 3, 4, 24 times 2, 48. So it's also a fun way to learn math as you're kind of 
learning through the process where you can go. Now we are going to decide here. So we'll do next. And we're gonna use our first blank. So remember our blank can help us create a word as much as we like, but get this a little more organized. That doesn't count as any points, but it makes you, since it's a time scale, it is allowed to be plural. We're gonna play waver and then wavers with the blank. And that's gonna be a total of 83 points. Why you ask? Because even though it's not too many letters here, we used all seven out of our current tile rack, which means that we get an extra 50 points just for accomplishing that feat. So when you see people play long words, that's what you're kind of looking for. Now, let's take a second. Because I talked about that blank and because I talked about the rarity of some of these, I want to show you just why that decision got made. So hold on a second. So as this became ever popular as a game, we had a simple problem. What you define as a word and what I define as a word can sometimes be drastically different. Now, people would agree to use standard common dictionaries, but through coordination with the, at the time named the National Scrabble Association, they came up with the official Scrabble dictionary, creating a unified way in order to figure out what did and did not constitute as a word. So what came next? The most logical thing that could. World tournaments. We now have a World Scrabble Championship that usually sees almost 100 entries every year. They all meet and they compete to find who has the best Scrabble words. The last competition won with 596 points in one round. So there's always room to improve. Let's get back to it. Now I'm just gonna make sure if you've been following along with the score. Right now it is for player one, 96 points after that 48 point play of quail. And waivers brought us 83 points. So now it's 96 for player one, 123 for player two. So let's see where we wanna go next. So we're gonna play ourselves another fancy word. Put that back a second. So we're going to do the word inflator. F, L. I will say another part of this game is learning about the spacing. But this is also yet another usage of the entirety of the rack. So it's not worth a lot of points here, aside from the double letter. So two, another double letter, which is one. But this F kind of helps with the process. So it only ends up being 63 points. But that 50 on its own is super helpful. So let's see what we can do next. are gonna get right cozy along the side of the board. So we're gonna do rotted, R-O-T-T-E and D. And now notice that we've got our triple word score here. So no matter what, we're doing a little bit better just solely off of the fact that we're getting part of that triple word Sometimes it's better to play it so that someone else can't play it. So that word is only worth 21 points. Now let's get a little cozy with this area over here. So we have grok, which I'm 
sure you've never heard of as a word before, but it uh, technically means, and it is an English word, to establish a community. So you don't always have to know exactly what it means, but if you just know that you've read it before and that it's a word, that's what matters. So I've heard grok in some piece of literature I cannot remember exactly where, but because of that, I know that I can play it here. Also, K-O is allowed to be used here, or K-O. Um, so this is going to be 24 points off of the double word, but we're starting to squeeze some of the room in here. And now we're going to squeeze it even further. And we're going to use just two simple vowels. Ewer, which is actually another word for basically a water pitcher. But because we know that that's a word, it is fair game. Now we are going to see here, we're actually after the inflator and grok plays by player one, they're actually in the lead now 183 to 164 because Euro is only worth about 20 points. Now let's go ahead. V. So instead of using this E that's right here, we're going to use the other blank square. But this gets us a total of, because notice, we play an entire rack again. So it's not worth a crazy amount of points. Only about 20, uh, double word, double letter, 24 points. But we get the other 50 off of that bingo. So we are still well on our way. Now we're going to continue to work off of the side down here. So that way we can generate ourselves a little more space and we've got to connect it to a word. So this D becomes add. Grab another. Hey, where is the B that I grabbed? A, B, L. I, A, and N. So notice that's going to get 50 points. So the people who are really good at this game know how to come up with those seven and eight letter words. So that way they get these 50 points numerous times in a game. Because this is only, even with that triple letter and the double word, is only worth 33 points. But because it's a seven letter word used to clear a rack, it's worth 83 points. Now we've opened up this bottom corner, so I want to play that as quickly as possible. So here is where we get zinc. And by the way, just in case you were curious, abelian is something that refers to a mathematical equation in algebra. So you just gotta make sure that you know a diversity of words and can remember a diversity of words, even if it's a large set of letters or a small amount, because notice we've still been able to make plays all over the board because of this. But zinc with a double letter and a triple word gets us to 75 points. Just because we can start scaling this with 25 on top of the triple word times three, 75. Oh, let's see, one last play we can make is using this V that's over here along the top. We're gonna open up a little bit more space. Cavi, which is a word in uh, Scottish for a coop of hen. So I might be mispronouncing it, but that brings us to another 26 points. So now we are sitting after multiple bingos and a lot of high scoring rounds. We are sitting at 332 for player one, 273 for player two. One more little interesting fact about Scrabble before we finish this up. Now last episode, I promised you a little more advanced mathematics and I intend to deliver. 
So the letter distribution is actually a fun little math experiment. You can actually graph it and see it on a curve. So let's say you have your X axis right here and your Y axis right here. We'll have this X axis be the number of pieces that are available. So E is 12, so it's gonna be right here. And you've got Y axis, the number of points. So there's 12, but there's only one point rather than the Q, which is worth 10 points up here, but there's only one of it. So you can actually graph, and because of Alfred Butts's architecture background, he was really good into math. So he found a way to make it to where it showed up as a curve from E, very common, and even A's and O's, all the way through the K's and the M's, which would show up about here, through the Q's right at the top. So if you get the chance, look at the letter distribution and map it out. You'll actually see a fun little curve right there with a little more advance to how you can think about how you play your game. Welcome back. Now let's finish up this game. Now, just as a reminder, we are sitting at 332 to 273, and it is player one's turn to go. So we are going to need... We're going to get ourselves another fancy word here. And let's go ahead and start from the back. So nine, but we're going to get so much further than that. W E I G H T and Y. This is once again another. Good old bingo. Uh, we've got ourselves a double letter and we've got another double letter here. So that's eight, nine, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 22, or sorry, 20. Oh, where am I? Apologies, I am missing a number somewhere. Oh, sorry, 31 based off of I forgot to add this as a new word. So this brings us to 31 points plus the 50 for the bingo. Notice that we've had a good four or five bingos to this point. Um, so that brings us to 81 points. Now what's left on the board? Let's go over here back up to the top. Let's get ourselves another triple word. It's simple but it works, and if you need to drop some vowels, there's a place to do it. Uh, Kui, which is actually a measurement of distance in Australia. So even if you know some really odd words, this is the time to play them. Uh, now, notice that because it's so small, it's only worth 21 points, but hey, points are points. So now we are going to... Take advantage of our W here for uh, player one. We're gonna get that triple word and do haw. Uh, so you're probably familiar with the term ham and haw. Uh, haw is to fumble in your manner of speaking. So it's a way, since you know that's a word, be able to use it, be able to use it here squeezing in tight for 36 points. Now we're gonna really have some fun with this one, or at least it's a word that I think fits really well because we can basically make a word through connecting almost all of these. So L and D are valid words. Ha is a valid word. As is a better an L. So we've got triple letter baseline all the way down. So notice that you can, as long as you have these two letter words in combination, you can put things right next to each other and they work. And this works to the tune of 82 points because, oh look, another seven for an eight letter word. Another bingo. 
another 50 points. Now we're sitting at 449 for player one, 376 for player two. So we're kind of running out of time for player two. Let's see, what's, what's next? We'll go simple here, pep. Uh, that's to just use some letters. That's only 14, so that gets us to 463. Um, now we've got to decide what we can use. What is left? Well, I'll tell you what is left. Yet another bingo. In some lovely spots, notice that E.T. is a word that we can play there. And trash men, all the way down, a double word and another double word. So what you're going to do for this is, since you're hitting it in two different spaces, so remember, this is going to clear out the rack, so that's 50 points right there. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, times two, times two. So double word, double word, times four. So that's going to end up with a total of 106 points off of a word that you can use. That catches you up fairly quickly because that brought you from 376 to 482. Based on the way that we have drawn throughout the game, there was only one letter left to go, and it was played at the most convenient possible. Mo and To, which you get to add together for a total of 10 points. That's 492. So now it's 508 to 492. There's a differential of 16 points. Well, how are we going to get there? What we're going to do is player one has tiles left on their rack. F, M, and you for eight points. That's going to cause a swing of double the points over here. So they're gonna get 16 points, leading us to 508 to 508. So even after playing a 500 point game, multiple bingos, it is more than possible to tie a game. But that's part of half of the fun because you may find some words that you weren't familiar with. You may find that a word you kind of didn't think was a word actually was a word and you managed to go through it. And you had a good time learning about other words and usually conversing with your friend. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed learning about one of my favorite word games and are feeling a bit more confident to try it on your own. You can always check online on the library's website for more NPL Universe programming out there. There's plenty of great content to see. See you next time we cover a new game.